what we're gonna do with these is get them moved out back in this spot here also i really want to get these off the floor so i'm gonna have to move a bunch of fish around my guppies and pretty much everything inlers and whatnot in these aquariums they gotta go get my lime green inlers over to their new rack got three little 10 gallons of them already plus more in a 75 also need to get my blue stars moved over there. And finally get my rare Synergos, my rainbow fish in here, which those things, oh my gosh, they're beautiful. But they're still young. You can see here though, I've got my doors open, the humidity, it's like 82 in here right now. Look at that from that tank, it's just cloudy. I mean, it's not cloudy, it's just the humidity on the glass. Also, you can see my placos down there, but I got two males, I believe, so. Never got any breeding at them. But, I mean, you can keep placos in these types of tanks as well. And those are from the old house. I've had those for, I don't even know how long. Less than a few years now. I can't remember which number this is. This is one of those L3, I think it may be a 333. One of them really rare ones. This guy should be easy to catch here. Right in the cave, buddy. Oh, no. Oh, oh, stay in there. Stay in there. Maybe if I turn it upside down, he may do the opposite. He may be like, oh, oh, oh. Wait, no, go back. Ah. Uh, anything in here? Let's see. No, nothing. Well, I'm gonna have to catch him now. Might as well get the caves for him. Gotcha, buddy. Oh, got him. It's pretty. Got some itty bitty baby millennium orange albinos in here. I didn't get many. I just got a couple that lived through. I don't know. They have always been a little trouble for me to breed. I think it's because they like low light because of their white luminescence. There's the parents. You've never seen them. It's a xanthic form of millennium rainbow fish. Incisus. And also got some dwarf neons in here. It's a female. I may actually just keep them in here and breed them outside since I've got so many. That covers these. I pulled out a bunch of pingu babies out of this, which are guppies, which they are finally up here in the guppy rig. Bunch of them back there exploring their new space. The adults already have been in the guppy rig for quite some time. I've stuck them in here so they wouldn't eat their babies. And also another tank of them with females and babies. Did end up sticking a bunch of black molly young in here. So if you guys are looking for black mollies, really nice group. I'll show you the parents. There is the group. I got those on my website for cheap right now. So because I am trying to get rid of them, get that space. Man, those mamas are about to pop again. Some buttes. And of course, with the dwarf neons, find babies in here. And then I've got my last Glossolepis maculosus in this tank, which I think I'll go ahead and move these rainbow tiger inlers over there, over to the new inler rack, and then get the one female out of here. I've got a, quite a few females in here, but the females keep beating up the males for some reason, so. I'm going to try them over here where I can see them really well. So hopefully I get more of them. I've got babies growing out in here and a couple other tanks, but it's always good to try to keep them going. And this is one crazy thing that will come out of the Rainbow Tiger in their line. Is look how big this... It's, I think it's a, hermaph a hermaphrodite, but it's a male. It's got male parts. I don't know. Or... It, I don't know, or it's just one big 
handler, but this thing is like four times the, this thing's like four times the size of the rest of them. In comparison. There you go, for comparison. And I've got a couple of them. I should probably try to line breed them out. So you can see the other one there. So I do got two of them. Not sure what's going on with that line, but I don't know. I have some mega big endlers. Should work on that definitely. What do you guys think? And of course, got little babies. And here are the Cernurgos. There you can see a lot of the blue on them. Catching them out of this quarantine. To the barn. Doesn't look like much in the container. Give them some time in this new 75. This is over where all my Taiwan Lily is, my CPD breeding and all that. Give them a day or two in there. Should kill it up nicely. This is cool. Found my first praying mantis in the fish room. I did go ahead and take the algae out in this tank because they were getting all caught up in it from spazzing out new space and they didn't know what to do. So, you gotta be careful with that algae sometimes. All right, rainbow tiger endlers are out. This one, Glossolepis maculosus male down here. Easy, buddy. Let's see, usually you want to try to move them upwards because they can't swim up as well. They'll try to jump though if you do it too fast. Slow and steady wins the race. Oh, he got into algae, he's freaking out. Sorry, buddy. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Stay up, stay up. Look at that color on them. What a cool, unique rainbow fish. I think you'll like it in there, buddy. We'll get you a lady friend. And a couple of tanks down. I've actually got, I don't know, quite a few females. Down in here somewhere. Where are you guys at? And this plant in here is really unique. I'm not sure what it is. It's actually come from a yard. Oh, there's the ladies. Come on up front, girls. Whoa, 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 easy, easy. You can see they got the spots too. Really cool. They're nice and healthy. Look at those spots. Oh, beautiful. That's the one I want to breed. Let me get her. Hold on. And she's got some big, beautiful spots. So I'm going to go for that. I mean, the other ones look good, but she is. I like, I like those attributes of it. All right, so they're all paired up now. Right, breathing hard, they're like, oh, 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 what just happened? That breathing will settle down, they're just freaked out. It's not because there's no filter. With the little bitty baby albino millennium orange albino rainbow fish, which I only got a couple of those. I'll go ahead and put them back in here. Oh, wait, is that a half beak in there? Hold up. Okay, well, somewhere in here is a half beak, I guess. So I almost sent them down to their grave. Good thing I didn't pour you guys in yet. I guess we'll go ahead and put them in this thing. This one's empty. That I know. 
All right, I've been just looking everywhere in this tank, and you know, Sylvie's aren't that small of a fish. So hard to find. Way back in the corner. Oh. Yeah, might as well get him moved out. I'll put with the others here. Other, they don't like the net. He already knows these guys, so he should blend in well. Well, where'd you guys go? Oh, there's a wasp in there. He got a drink and didn't make it. Poor little fella. But you know what? I'll just leave that in there. It becomes part of the ecosystem. I never bother with it. Taking them out. It's food. All right, so finally we got those three empty there. So, I mean, it's always a process. Just like it sounds easy as, oh, I just need to move these tanks. But no, it's a process. I got to go through a lot to even get there. I mean, if you look too, they're all healthy, good looking tanks. I mean, granted the front may need cleaned up a little bit and the glare. Oh, and there's always one behind. You should always go back and triple double check him. And those dwarf neons you just saw in here. As you, I'm keeping those in there. We're going to take them outside. Oh, and you hear, see, coming off my, and you see here, coming off my net, that is proteins from this newer tank. And I'm not sure what causes it, but it just becomes food. Yeah, same with that. Clear, 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 clear. These are no water changes. These are no filters. These are just literally fancy mud puddles. And it doesn't really matter. The substrate varies, so, you know, I could probably do it even without the substrate. Even without the plants. The real key is biologically sound water. Now, for here in this 75, I've also got Millennium Orange Albino Rainbow Fish, but I've got a bunch of babies. I took the adults out. Nice green carpet algae there. Pretty wild. And one of my dried up, um, one of my dried up air plants that I got from the yard that I was testing out here. It's fallen in there, but I'm not going to worry about it either because it all becomes part of the ecosystem as well. Now here in the corner, let me see. Well, maybe see. You see there's, there's a few little babies here and there. The Millennium Orange Albino Rainbow Fish, which with these guys, instead of using a net, since they're right at the top of the water. I'm just suction them right in. I'm gonna get what I can. There'll probably be some that go outside. So that's fine, we'll see what they do. I'll keep an eye out on it. Unless I happen to catch them all. Boop, just like that. Got all the ones I got. I was about to say I'm running out of tanks to be putting these in my babies. This is why I'm saying the fry rack is so important for me to get these fry racks done because this is literally what my a lot of my tanks are of is just me putting babies in here and there. You little guys go. Enjoy your new little home. Fellas. Always check the container. I always check the container because sometimes they can stick to it. Surface tension, biofilm, stuff like that will hold them onto it. All right, I got maybe 12 of them out of there. And for those who have been watching me for quite some time, these are actually tanks that came from my old house. Same substrate and everything. When I moved, I just left a little bit of water, left substrate in there, and uh, brought them back with me. So these have been established for quite some time. 
And in this tank, I was hoping to get some albino rice fish babies out of it. I mean, I've got the guppy grass set up there, some nice plants on the bottom, but I still haven't seen anything. Which I got them moved over into here, which this was gonna be my cichlid rack, but I don't know, the rice fish kind of been taken over. Plus these would make some sweet guppy tanks. I love the ambient light on them. But these are actual albinos, red eyes. And uh, I haven't had any babies yet from them, so I don't know, I'll keep working on them. Everybody's getting so hungry, they're like, it's lunchtime. Come on, feed me, feed me. Nice to see Mr. Placo out and about, though. And you know these guys are always hungry. I can't ever walk by them and them not ever act like they're hungry. Aren't you? You guys always hungry, huh? Oh, 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 shouldn't taste them. Sure, I'm gonna have to give them some food now. But look at that, they're like, food, food. Food, 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 no food. Don't you worry, guys. I'll give you some food. Come over here, though. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So quick. I see some of the little baby coming out. Youngin. Hello down there, boy. Couple of them. Couple for you. Ooh, splash zone. Good thing I ain't moved. <laughs> yum, yum. Look at them. That was cool how they all balled up like that. All right, back to it. And also for fish that are more colony breeding like these, Matano rice fish, it's kind of a different rice fish, blue eye. I've actually got a lot of babies in there with them. I try to keep them fed early in the day. That way they're not predating as much. I'm trying to find an egg here. Uh, you can see a little black egg there. Eggs are all black, pretty long. But anyways, with the albino rice fish, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the plants in there just in case they may just hatch later. So that brings us to the last tank, finally. This one probably might be the trickiest. And this plant here, I think that's a prayer plant. But then here is a couple hatchet fish. But in here is a couple hatchet fish. Why the hell? But in here is a couple hatchet fish. And this actually has more of the cichlid kind of crushed coral substrate. Which this tank has been doing absolutely phenomenal with plants. There's a golden white cloud in there with them as well. So I got a good spot. I think I'm going to put where to put all them but there's also some really nice panda guards in here which is going to be a trick to catch and find that i've had for a long time that i brought from the old house so let me swoopity scoop them up watch the hatchet fish hopefully they're not oh they're pretty fast i'm gonna need two nets definitely gonna need two nets okay what was that oh, oh. Man, they are really fast. Okay. All right, so these guys were a really interesting catch. So what I ended up having to do here was I got up underneath them, but I got up underneath them, but I was trying to keep their focus on this net as I was coming up from underneath. So they were looking at this because they look up towards the top more. And since I had them distracted with this, they didn't move away from that but they were zipping and flipping they're definitely lively and we're going crazy but these guys are absolutely awesome look at those fins on them and the size on them big old chunkers look at those so cool i don't know i kind of want to put them somewhere else where i can see them <gasps> they would go in good with the rope fish 
So if you don't know what rope fish is, here's one right here just hanging out in the tank. Look at that in the proid. Cool dude. There's actually three of them in here, soon to be four. Golden white cloud, super easy catch. Ooh, look at the red on its nose. Lots of red. Lips, red lips. As you can see, I've got more in this tank here. This is right below where the barbs are. The one that looks horrible on the glass. But you can see down at the bottom through some of the biofilm. You can see all the way down there, it's pretty clear water. But it just looks horrible from the front. Which I do have some paint, <sighs> reflection. I do got pandagars in here as well. So I do have backup pandagars, as well as backup barbs. She's hanging out like, where did you put me? She'll find friends. And then back up Millennium Orange Albino Rainbows. I like to back up my stuff. Then it's important to have good genes and be able to mix those with others so it's not a bunch of inbreeding. There's one of the hatchet fish. There's the other. They took off. They freaked out. They don't handle being moved very easily. But it'll be nice to see them get comfort comfortable in here and now that i know i can keep them well now that i know i can keep them well i'm planning on getting more oh this guy's oh did just see the rope fish but he took off so the rope fish they live all in and throughout here since I got so many lights behind me, that glare is just. Which I was thinking about moving the rope fish and kind of redoing this, but honestly, the way that they've tunneled and created their own kind of house out of it, I think I'm going to leave it. Because, I mean, I am trying to get them to breed. Oh, there comes one. I'm trying to get them to breed, and hopefully their eggs will fall down to where the young can live through. And, uh,. I don't know. I'm hoping the hatchet fish will help them feel more comfortable too and not so scared. I absolutely love those rope fish. They're so cool. They do come out, especially when the food comes out. So they're not always hiding. When you do get to watch them, oh, it's so cool because they wrap up and do all kinds of things. Pretty sure I caught them breeding. The other day they definitely look like it all right so that brings me back to these old painted gars in here now i've got a couple of choices is i can either tear up this tank trying to hunt them down which i will have to tear up this tank to hunt them down because good luck buddy good luck or i can leave them in here and see if and put some more rocks in here and see if they'll multiply outside for me. I don't know, it's a toughie. Oh look, the little pink gravel in commemoration. <laughs> this was used substrate I got from somebody else. They're down there in this, down there in this corner, I don't know if I can get, they're zipping around. There's the one. Breathing heavy. They already know what's up. Hmm. Lots of nice plants in here, too. I hope they do good outside. Can't, I can't remember how many are actually in here. They are a good size. I'd say they'll get lots to eat. Get them real fat. All right, so finally got those all caught up. There's so much more other fish I need to move around the fish room and mess with, which we're not gonna make it on this video because what we're gonna do with these is get them moved out back in this spot here because the sun actually sets back there. It kind of rises more on this side. So this is probably one of my most shaded areas, which will be perfect for those tanks. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and get the weeds out, kind of rake it smooth, level it out best I can. And then we'll get them moved out. And we'll salvage some of these plants and uh, especially like these nice Anubias. That's, yeah, that's a beaut. Oh, we'll leave some for outside, but These will be good for these more ambient lit tanks, especially on top of these rocks. Now this is my fossilized one. This one's more for show of the rocks being fossilized. There you can see a bunch of the fossils within the rock. Let's go one more over. Trying to find a good place where it just kind of naturally sits in, wedges itself. That's nice. That'll work. I did end up finding a few buches out of that, out of those tanks, as well as some long lost and forgotten needle leaf java fern. So that was a nice find. I'm pulling out weeds, but check out this bug here. Look at the bright orange color. Watch out, leaf. Pull that leaf. Look at that guy. So cool. Got a nice patch cleared out here of weeds. If I need botanicals, you know I know where to go. All right, leaves have been removed. Use a rake, kind of level it out, smooth it out a bit. That way it'll be somewhat level for the tanks. I can always manipulate it. And the ground soft being sand, it'll kind of probably form itself. But I think we're about ready for tanks. And I did find some nice air plants for my endeavors. And by grading it, I'm just going through and just smoothing it out, raking it down this way, I rake it down that way, and then I go back and do it all over again. Make sure as I'm looking as like the dips and divots are kind of getting filled in by the excesses to where you just smooth it out. Now, if this was more clay based though, and see how it's kind of going to a lower elevation, being sand, it'll drain out pretty well, but you can always get some rock to put on top of it too if you want to make it look nice. But being aquariums, the bottom's getting wet, it's not going to matter. As far as getting the water out of there, I could get a pump and pump it out, but I'm going to just use old hose and bucket because I don't have all that set up and deal with all that mess. So this will be a mission. I am going to go ahead and keep these dwarf neon rainbows because I always need to back up my lineage. I don't want to rest them. Even though that's my backup. Very nice. Well, good thing the uh, tank shouldn't mind getting wet. Hope fill them up a little bit. All right, well, maybe not. Because, I mean, I also need Lady LRB's help. And, you know, sorry asking enough for her to move these big 75s and stuff. So, we'll wait. You guys want to see what happens with all this subscribe i'll be updating making a video also whenever i settle these tanks on there i kind of want to do it little by little and i don't want to put them too close together because if they pinch on each other and level out then they can push on each other's glass which will cause them to bust and stuff so i gotta watch that when placing them one big thing but anyways we'll make an update video Teaching you, telling you, showing you what all happens with these here in the future. As well as the plethora of other tanks and going ons within the fish room. So hit that subscribe button. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, everybody, peace. Have a great one. Me and my night kitty. Since the dog's not here. Oh, we're running out of flashlight, kitty. We better get back home. Yeah.